Okay, today, making a video on one of my favorite babies. This here is the PSP Sony testing tool. This thing's pretty sweet. Right here. Now the only thing that stinks is, just like my giant tool over here for the PlayStation 2, this sucker is supposed to have little, little, like, ah, uh, it's hard to explain. Let me see. I'm sure most of you know the the little option thing you could with the PS2, the original ginormous fat PS2. How it, you could have like these blue fins sticking out, and which raise it up a little bit, and they get look fancier. Well, yeah, this is supposed to have sort of something like that, but it doesn't have it. But I'm not that mad because it doesn't really do anything besides serve an aesthetic, serve as aesthetic. So here's the front. Let's see. This is U UMD disk drive, so let's open it. <coughs> there is the inside. Let's see. Can't really see because it's dark in there. Let's see what we got going on in the front. UMD DVD drive select. And then remember, it's like, okay, now. Some of these things I don't know what they are, so for sure. So let me open the manual and show you what's going on inside here. There's a whole bunch of garbage warnings it's saying like how it's approved by every region or something see warning for customers in Europe warnings for USA and Canada USA I don't know what that says warning Korean warnings warnings now I'm not gonna show this whole thing but I'll put a if I could find it I saw it a couple of days ago. There's a link I could put on the FCC website where you could download this manual. It's pretty cool. I was looking at it. So yeah. So I have to go to the front with the things too. I forget. Okay. So let's see. Like I said, this is the UMD drive. Read UMD disk. This is the drive select because you can use... You can also have U PSP games burned to UMD, I mean, DVD discs. So that's what that's for. This is the open button, <laughs> for those who didn't know. Let's see, memory stick access indicator. This is it right here. That little, little light right above where it says memory stick duo. There's the slot, USB connector. This is where, I'll show you that in a minute. The drive select button, and according to the manual, it says, switches between UMD drive and DVD drive. The selected drive is identified by the UMD slash DVD ROM drive indicators. The drive select button, number 7, which is the drive select button right there, can be used only when the power indicator of the controller is not lit. Okay. The open and close button, this is just stuff you would think you would know let's see now let me go into some stuff I don't know these two buttons right here I do not know what they do so let's see what they do according to the manual let's see go to number 10 system initialize button while holding that button this button right here it says the system will be on standby button returns the communication processor software to factory default initial state so let's see what network initialize button does. While holding down this button, pressing the on standby button restores the factory default values for IP address settings. So that's pretty cool. I'll tell you what those tell you in a minute what those IP addresses and stuff what you need to know those for. This right here is the controller port, so take this out, you gotta first let me unplug the mini USB. So you press down these, and then you pull it up. Here's the port right here. This is the hook to the, the PSP controller. Here's the actual cable right here. Let's see. See, it's got a little tie. It goes in here, and then it turns into one big cable. So let me put that back real fast. It's hard to put this back sometimes. There we go. Let's see, put that back. Okay. Now let's see. Control report, we just went over that. The GPO indicator. This is the GPO indicator right here. Now I do not know what these do either, so I'll tell you. These are eight indicators that are used. 
that are user definable by PSP software developers, so probably won't be using those much. This right here is a headset connector, which on the PSP. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what these GPI switches do. It says the GPI switch. These are eight dip switches that are u definable by PSP software developers. Once again, here's like so. Here's a over little scan of the front of the system. So let's go. Ugh, almost fell. Okay. Here's the back. Let me bring the manual because I don't know what some of the back stuff does either. Okay. So here's the antenna for the system because the PSP hardware, I'll show you the controllers in a minute, is actually in this. The PSP controllers, all they have is the boards for the buttons and the screen. So let's see. Here's a fan. Let's see. One. Aerial. This is it. For wireless LAN use. There you go. That's the antenna. External connector. This two. Number two. There is a port under here. Let's see if you can see it. Yep. Can't really see it. It's covered up. It says, But it says for service personnel only, so probably don't shouldn't be opening that. This is Right here is dedicated connector for servicing for use by service personnel only. Caution, usage of this port may cause irreverse, irreparable damage. So don't use that, basically. <laughs> here is foot switch. It says connector for network cable allows connection to a... Oh, I'm reading the wrong one. That's the network cable. This, the foot says connects to supplied foot switch. I have no idea what that is. And here's your VGA out right here. Here's your left and right audio. 19.5 volts in, negative to positive. Uses like a PC, like a laptop AC power. And just in case if some of you have this and don't know what the power, it is also, um, 5 amp, that's what it is. 19.5 volt to DC, 5 amps, okay. This right here, it is, it says it is for, let's see, I gotta split the page. Connects to an access point using coaxial cable. Here's the picture, let me see, right there in the manual. So yeah, I don't know what that is. Here's the clamp, this is just for the cable that would go into here and the Wi-Fi antenna and this is just the fan right here okay so this is the back not much going on so let's go around back to the front <coughs> and let's talk about the PSP the screen's very reflective let's see maybe if I turn off the light it'll be better because that's annoying Okay, so there's the system. That should be better. <coughs> well, not really, but from the front, I'm not gonna show you. It looks like a standard PSP. Here's where the differences start. Here's the top. This is like a PSP 1000. It's got your. Let's see if it'll focus. Not focusing right now. Uh, but let's see, this is like the top, there's no UMD drive, because here's the back. It says controller, let's see. There's the left switch again. There's the memory card switch, which would be for, no, this is the wireless LAN. On and off, I don't know if it does anything actually. Here's the on and off switch, which does work, because in order to turn this on, first you must press the power button right there. Then you have to turn this on, flip this switch, then it will turn on. And then let's see the bottom, and this is about the last difference. See right there, the audio headphone jack is missing, and that's it. 
It's very light also because a lot of the stuff is just inside this giant guy. Then I also have another one of these. This is in better shape because I think this is newer. I don't know. This has a higher serial number. I don't know what's with this one. But it feels heavier than this one. So maybe it's because it's newer. They added some junk. I don't know. So. Oh yeah. And I remember now. I was going to show you. Hopefully next time if I get to turn this sucker on. I'll show you the coolness. Let's see. Setting up. This is where it gets cool. Because if you turn this thing on. Let's see. You could hook this up straight up to an Ethernet cable to your computer. Then you put in the IP address of this baby into your into your um, computer, and it has its own little website. See, the standard IP address for all these is the same. The development tool. See. Hopefully next time I'll get to show you. I gladly show you. I want to see what it is too. So yeah. Let's see what it what the setup says. This is interesting. I've never read this. This option allows users to modify settings. Mm. Hmm. So yeah, got his own little website. You get to see once you turn this thing on. Pretty cool. You can actually do that with this too, but I've never gotten it to work yet. Maybe my next video will be on this. I've been wanting to do one on that guy for a while, but I haven't gotten to it. So, here's this guy for sure, for right now. It is the, just to show you, the Testing Tool DTP10, I mean DP-T1000. So, over and